In Singapore, there, are, there is one or there are two things that our teachers do very well. And one of them is this thing called number bonds. Number bonds is things like three and two make five. Five is also four and one. That's what we call number bonds. You whisper this phrase to any kindergarten teacher in Singapore, they'll know what they're talking about. So it's a prevalent thing. They will teach it. It's very, very important um, in our kindergarten education, number bonds. Somehow, everyone thinks that this is an important thing to do, and they teach it. Number bonds is emphasized prior to the learning of addition. They do a lot of this. They spend weeks on this little thing. Children are given, say, five unifix cubes, and they are guided to see that one and four make five, for example, and five is also three and two, or four and one, and sometimes some children who are more advanced will say five and zero. And our textbooks are written in such a way to convey the concept of addition as different meaning. For the birds, it's the concept of addition as a change. For the ducks, it's a concept of addition as a part whole static group. And for the dogs, it's like, yeah, some of them are not really identical, but you can still consider them as the same unit, in this case, dogs. Some are spotted, some others are not. So we try to put in important things into the book um, to help the teachers understand that when you teach addition, there are different meanings you teach. In the first grade, we continue to emphasize on number bonds because remember, some kids have not gone to kindergarten, but we teach it in more ways than the way, what you have seen just now. For example, the use of a number balance. We import all this from US. Of course, this is something common you find at NCTM ex exhibits, isn't it? You can buy stuff like that. And, uh, it's now in our textbooks. Addition facts are given emphasis in the first six months of the first grade. The children first learn it up to 10 and then later up to 20. Initially, they learn the count on and count on strategy. But when they go to bigger numbers beyond 20, the textbook emphasizes making 10. And this teacher is rather creative. Uh, use the egg holder as tense frame. And you know, the, those plastic pieces there is what we use to hold the bread back together. So it's recycling in a way, teaching the kids as well. And the number balance you see in the textbook will appear in the classroom. And this, th this teacher is getting the kids to do 4 plus 3 is equal to 2 plus 5. The concept of equality. So this is given emphasis in the first six months. We take a long time to teach something, uh, but we don't apologize for it. That's our strength. In kindergarten, we teach a lot of number bonds and addition facts. And we found that very useful because kids who come in with this to the first grade, they are ready to fly. Those who do not have this, for whatever reason, including not going to kindergarten, we need to help them in this, and when they have this, they will go on. When they don't, they continue to struggle. Those are the strengths of our system. However, our teachers often see mathematics as numbers. That become a problem. Looking for patterns, looking for relationship, what I call connections, for the purpose of generalization, is equally important in our opinion. And we find this characteristic, this attribute, to be very evident among older children in 5th and 6th grade who do very well, those belonging to the advanced and high achievement level, according to the team's benchmark. They have this ability. So communication is important. Communication is putting one thought, kind of abstract sometimes, kind of not clear sometimes, but being able to put it on paper or orally, we consider those important things. In our training of teachers, we want them to understand that if you miss out on a topic, don't worry. If you do not solve this problem, do not worry. But did you give them opportunities to develop ability to visualize? Do you give them opportunities to make connection, to look for patterns, to look for relationship, and maybe perhaps to generalize if they are capable of that as well? And do you give them opportunity to communicate their thoughts, in our case, in English language? In written form, 
whether they use drawings or pictures or tables or in oral form or in words. So do not miss out on these three big ideas. How did I arrive at these three big ideas? As I mentioned earlier, for the more able students in the fifth and sixth grade, we did quite an extensive research in interviewing a large number of them, and consistently, these three attributes seem to be what they possess. So now we are telling our lower grade teachers, the first grade, the second grade, as well as the kindergarten teachers, do not sweat over the topics. If you miss out a topic, you miss out a page, nothing's going to happen. Don't tell anyone. Nobody's going to find out. It will not show up in the grades. If your child can visualize very well, if they can make connections, and they can communicate and articulate their ideas, do not worry about the test. They will do well. And we know that because on national tests, in a team study, or whatever test we throw to them, they always do well, if they possess these three attributes. So in training our earlier grade teachers, in training the five kindergarten school teachers, the, the teachers from the five kindergarten school, uh, that's what I'm doing with them. I'm giving them learning experiences as a learner of mathematics. That these are the important things. Whether you do addition or not, that's not important. Whether you're doing area or not, it's not important. The topic is just an excuse. And in fact, that is the main philosophy of mathematics curriculum in Singapore. If you access the curriculum on the internet, on the Ministry of Education website, go to one of the earlier pages and read under the paragraph rationale. Why, did we, why do we teach mathematics in the first place? And I think the document put it across very nicely and it says, and I quote, mathematics is an excellent vehicle for the development and improvement of a person's intellectual competence. I unquote. Mathematics is an excellent vehicle. It's just a mere vehicle. You miss out that topic, sure, you can always teach it another time. You miss out that problem, no big deal. It's just a vehicle, it's just a platform. It's not the goal. The goal is the development for the young children and improvement for the older kids. Development and improvement of a person's intellectual competence. It's the intellectual competence that we are so interested in. And in my words, the intellectual competence are visualization, looking for connection, and communication. And my other colleagues from the various countries have actually elaborated and give you a lot of necessary details about each of those already. I'm merely summarizing them.